Hi, we're Quaint and Curious Volumes. My name is James. It's my friend Louise. Today I'm going to do a book haul. I went to Piedmont Books and More in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Uh, it's a used bookstore, kind of on the outskirts of town. Uh, that is, uh, they've had their rent raised an unconscionable amount and they're, they're going out of business. So I was there last weekend. Um, they were 75% off their already low prices. Um, I didn't think I would get that much. I, uh, I, I got that much. And so I'm going to show you what I got. It's, uh, I'm pretty excited about what I have, but it's also a little melancholy for me because I will miss that store as I've, as I've lamented to you already. Uh, this worked out to about a dollar a book on average. So anyway, here we go. First up, I've got a couple of hardcovers. One is the uh, Library of America Edith Wharton Novels volume. So this has her three of her most famous ones, The House of Mirth, The Custom of the Country, and The Age of Innocence. It doesn't have Ethan Frome, but it does have The Reef, which I believe Henry James said was her best. I don't know. I've, I've read The House of Mirth. I've read uh, The Age of Innocence. And I have uh, kind of not great copies of, of, of three of these books, which so maybe I'll make some room on my shelves by consolidating into this great Library of America volume. So, Ooh, I also got, this is a little weird, um, it is from the Nobel Library, um, or the Nobel Prize Library, it has a picture of Sir Alfred there on the cover, and I gather that it was a series, sort of a encyclopedia or a book of the month style thing that you could join, or you could just buy a whole bunch of it, of course they so this one has um, a bunch of S's. So it has selections from Nellie Socks, John Paul Sartre, um, George Bernard Shaw, Franz Emil Sinanpa, I think, and uh, René Sully Proudhon. Uh, so I got this because I am mildly interested in the Nobel Prize and its history, and I've never found anything by René Sully Proudhon in English. Um, he was the first prize winner um, in 1901, I believe. So it has, a, it has a, a picture, these sort of woodcut pictures of the uh, writers, that's Nellie Sox. Um, and the presentation address, which total snooze, but then it also has selections from the, uh, the works. Um, I think maybe for some of them it has their speech or it has a little um, summary of their of their life. So there you go. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, Rene Sully Proudhon, and it has some interesting color illustrations in it as well. There you go. Smart. So, so those are the two hardcovers that I have. Then I have three plays, uh, or three volumes of plays. I have uh, The Bacche of Euripides, a, uh, a sort of retelling and translation by Wole Soyinka. Um, so so uh, Soyinka was a Nigerian writer, also a Nobel Prize winner, the first um, African, or the first black African anyway, uh, to win the Nobel Prize for literature. Um, <laughs> the, the real one. Uh, I, don't, I don't care. Um, and then I got this uh, selection of plays by August Strindberg. Um, very influential uh, dramatist who I have never read anything by. Or seen anything by. And then same deal, James Singe, Sing, I don't know how to say this name. 
a great Irish playwright, the Playboy of the Western World, and other plays. What else does this have in it? Riders to the Sea, The Shadow of the Glen, The Tinker's Wedding, The Well of the Saints, Playboy of the Western World, and Deirdre of the Sorrows. That's quite a bit for less than 200 pages. Are, are these short plays? Perhaps. Okay, um, then I got a small stack of uh, Penguin Classics. I got Suetunius, uh, The Twelve Caesars. This is the, the Robert Graves translation. Okay. Where you going? Go ahead. All right, good girl. William James's Varieties of Religious Experience. I've had copies of these in the past. I've had a copy of this. Tacitus's um, Agrica, Agri Agricola and Germania. Um, I actually, I had an earlier Penguin classic of this. Have I read it? I have not. Okay. Um, Bamba Suso and Nabana Kanut Sunjata. So, I don't know a lot about this, but it is famous across West Africa. From Guinea to the Gambia, through Mali and into Burkina Faso, the heroic ex exploits of Sunjata, based on events in the early 13th century, are still constantly being reinterpreted in many different media. Okay, so there you go. This is uh, an African classic. And then I got... Some more plays. Uh, Plautus, The Pot of Gold, The Prisoners, The Brothers, uh, Menachmus, The Staggering Soldier, and Pseudolus. Okay. And one of the newer Penguin classics, Thomas More's Utopia. Thomas More's Utopia may not be your utopia, but it is a utopia. Uh, okay. This is a Oxford World classic. I have read this, I'm pretty sure in a different tra translation, and many years ago, Boethius's The Consolations of Philosophy, or The Consolation of Philosophy, um, singular, not plural. Uh, this is a late antiquity, early medieval era um, kind of summation of, of uh, philosophy and theology. Uh, Boethius was in prison when he wrote this, if I remember right. This was assigned reading in a, um, a medieval literature class that I took. This was one of the most widely read books of the Middle Ages, I'm told. And here's another, it's a penguin. It's a penguin red classic, which I've never seen before. And it is an adventure novel, She by H. Ryder Haggard, which, uh, uh, some of the cool kids are reading this month. I'm, I'm not going to join them, I don't think. But uh, it's, a, it's a neat little mass market size paperback with a cool illustration on the cover. And, uh, yeah. And I have some some of the older style of Penguin uh, with the, the orange spines. The Penguin English Library uh, edition of Jude the Obscure by Thomas Hardy. A lot of my booktube friends like Thomas Hardy. I have never read him, but uh, the next year might be the year for me. I've, I've got a lot of things planned for this year, but I was uh, I was saying to one of my uh, booktube friends that maybe next year will be the year of of Tess and Jude and and uh, and that whole happy lot. Um, then I have three Evil and Law novels. Um, I, uh, I picked up a couple of them in my last book haul from Piedmont Books, and so here we go. Unconditional Surrender. Officers and Gentlemen. And Helena. Which is slightly, uh, I think, more recent edition. Um, and I, I, I've got a couple of these with this type of cover art on it, this sort of, I guess, uh, Art Deco cover art. Um, so yeah, so that's three Evelyn Laws. 
Um, the ones that I've read by him I have liked, um, and these are pretty short and, uh, well, not very well made, but, uh, you know, so they're good enough for me to, to read, read through once. Um, one more thing from Wa, I got uh, a collection of essays, articles, and reviews by Evelyn Wa. Look at that guy. I mean, he's got opinions, right? <laughs> That's a guy who has some things he wants to he wants to let you know about. Um, it's such a it's such a good writer. They say he was not a nice guy, but I I'm you know I'm sure these are are probably pretty pretty good. Uh, good reading. It looks I mean it's just the kind of thing a bunch of short reviews that's great for picking up in a spare minute or two and leafing through reading one or two here and there. Um, then I have. Patrick O'Brien, I've never read Patrick O'Brien. I think this is like the 10th in the series. If you like this series, do you have to read them in order? Can I read the, the Russell Crowe story? Did you like the movie? I love that movie. And um, I, I, I wish they'd made a whole, a whole series of them. Why can't we have that instead of uh, the Marvel Extended Universe? Or in addition to the Marvel Extended Universe. You can like that, that's fine. Maybe we could have both things. Yeah. All right. Um, I was just thinking about this book, and I was thinking that I should probably dedicate a, a maybe a month to reading uh, this book and a couple of other things, not necessarily by him, but uh, to kind of get caught up on some of the uh, contemporary um, writers in translation. And so I was glad to find this. It's scary, so content warning. Norwegian guy. Carl Ove Knausgaard. I think that's how you say it. Carl Ove, Ove? Ove Knausgaard. And his struggle, book one. I, I, I think he buys a, a guitar capo or something in, in this book, and it takes him 400 pages. Um, so anyway, yeah, I, I, people have opinions. Uh, maybe I'll have one. So, all right. Um, so speaking of the consolation of philosophy, this... I think the male is here. Okay. I'm getting... I'm almost done. So, let's see. Uh, here is Alain de Baton's How Priests Can Change Your Life. Um, as I was being checked out, the, uh, the proprietor at, at the store, she said... And this was on my, um, this was on my stack. I was going to read this. Um, so I guess she, she had a stack in the, uh, in her little office in the back of the store. And, you know, she wanted to read something before she put it out. And she, she, she didn't get to it. Um, but she said, you know, now that I have, now that I'm not running a bookstore, I think I'll have more time to read. Um, and I said, as long as you don't break your glasses, like the guy in, uh, the Twilight Zone. And she said, I love that episode. <laughs> Anyway, um, yeah, so I think this is sort of a, some kind of popular philosophy. Um, I've read Hélène de Paton's Consolations of Philosophy, I believe it was called, which is another sort of popular popularization of several different philosophers. And it was, it was an easy read, better than, you know, easier than reading Schopenhauer, um, I think. Anyway, so we'll see how that, that goes. Um, then I have... Some essays by Umberto Eco, Six Walks in the Fictional Woods, um, which, uh, you know, I, I like the Echo that I've read. So uh, Here's one, Kenneth Rexroth's Classics Revisited. Um, Kenneth Rexroth, if you don't know, he was, uh, I know him as a poet. He was part of um, like a San Francisco, I think it was called the San Francisco Renaissance, maybe. But, uh, you know, roughly the same time as the Beat Poets and the uh, Black Mountain Poets. Uh, there were a group in on the West Coast, uh, including like Gary Snyder and Lawrence Ferlinghetti. And I think Rex Roth was, was one of those guys. So this is a book of, uh, of essays about, about classic literature. Um, uh, about the Epic of Gilgamesh and Huckleberry Finn. Uh, yeah, so that sounds... On, oh, one on on the nature of things by Lucretius, um, the Caesar's Gallic Wars, 
Tacitus is history, Plutarch. So it's like, you know, uh, the tale of Genji. All your favorites, right? What does uh, what does Rex Raw think of them? I'll find out, I guess. Um, then I have uh, Leslie Fiedler's Fiedler on the Roof. <laughs> I get it. Um, which is uh, I don't know if you can see the subtitle: Essays on Literature and Jewish Identity. Um, I think I, I I had another collection of Fiedler's essays that I never read. Um, uh, but it has uh, essays on Joyce and the Christianness of the Jewish American writer, um, Isaac Bashevis Singer, why is the Grail Knight Jewish? So, some, some good things, I guess. Uh, then I have another book of essays, Essays of Eliah by Charles Lamb. Uh, this is a very famous English essayist, um, known for writing kind of uh, uh, synoptic versions of uh, Shakespeare, yeah, somewhere somewhat bulbarized uh, synopses of Shakespeare, uh, but also a very popular essayist of the uh, 19th century, if I believe. And it has a foreword by uh, Philip Lopate, who is an essayist that I, I like quite a bit. Uh, this is one that I think I saw on Steve Donahue's channel recently. The Mole People. <laughs> uh, Life in the Tunnels Beneath New York City. Um, by, who is this by? Jennifer Toth. So, I, and did he say that this was not entirely true? Maybe? I'll have to look up what the, what the, what the real story is with the Mole People. But, um, you know, as a former New Yorker, uh, I'm really interested to read about people living in tunnels beneath the city. Okay, now the last two are some big, chunky um, bricks that you have no doubt seen before. They are David McCullough's, um, auto, uh, not all, but David McCullough's biography of John Adams and Ron Chernow's biography of Alexander Hamilton. So, yeah, so these are both uh, well-regarded popular biographies that I have not read. Uh, they are pretty big. Now, I have them when I'm ready to read them. I, I mean, John Adams is a very interesting fellow. Alexander Hamilton, I guess the jury's still out if people like him or not. <laughs> Just kidding. All right, so that's what I got at Piedmont Books and More. Uh, thanks for watching. Talk to you later. Bye.